All right, welcome to a code report solution video. The first one in, I don't know how long, it's been months. I apologize for my hiatus. I have been busy, but we're back with a leak code problem. We're gonna solve it in APL, BQN, and maybe J. And we're gonna look at some solutions in, I don't know, Java, Python, whatever the top solutions are on this leak code problem. So problem 2,482, difference between ones and zeros in row and column. This was problem number two from the most recent bi-weekly leak code contest that happened a couple days ago. And basically, I mean, the problem statement is kind of confusing, but it's a pretty simple problem once you figure out what they're asking for. Basically, I'm not going to read through it. You're given a matrix not necessarily square, but our first example is square, and it's gonna consist of zeros and ones. Uh, so this is the grid that we're given for our first example, and it, it asks us to calculate the diff, which is defined by uh, this formula right here. So basically they want you to count the ones in each row and the ones in each column, and then also the zeros in each row and the zeros in each column, and then plug those values in for each of the indices in our matrix. So that's basically all I'm going to say. If you want, pause the video, read the problem, go take a look at the other example. But what we're going to do now is we are going to go and hop into this discuss button, switch tabs, and we're going to look at the top solutions. So we've got a C++ solution. Then we've got, I actually don't know what this solution is. And then we've got a Python, uh, Python solution. And then we've got a Java solution. So let's Take a look at those if I click those links correctly. First one, C++. Um, doesn't even fit on my screen. What is this? 30 lines of code, 40 lines of code. Who cares? It's verbose. This is a top voted solution. Not saying it's bad, just saying it's verbose. Moving on to top solution number two is also a C++ solution, as you can see by the vector. This one is a lot more concise, but still uh, still pretty verbose. What is this, 15 lines of code or something like that? Moving on to, I think it was the Python solution next. This one, about as long as the C++ solution we just looked at, but a little bit shorter and obviously more terse because Python is a more terse language. So it's about 10 lines of code. And last but not least, we have a Java solution, which looks to be the second longest at roughly 20 lines of code. Who knows, plus or minus. The point is, all of these solutions are verbose. Once again, not saying they're bad, uh, they're just verbose. So let's go take a look at how to solve this problem in APL. Here we are in our ride editor, link in the description for a video on how to install this on your computer if you'd like to get started. I know it works on Windows and Linux. I think it also works on Mac, although I have not personally tested that. And we have our first example already typed in here. So we've got our three by three matrix called grid, and then we've got our result of we, what we want this to be equal to. And just for the purposes of this video, we've got our formula here, uh, ones row, ones call, zeros row, zeros call. And I'm just gonna refer to these as A, B, C, and D. All right, let's get started. So let's zoom out maybe a, a tiny bit. And so we've got grid. We want to count the ones in each column. And row. So first, let's do rows. We're going to use the uh, rowwise reduce operator with plus. And if we do this with grid, we're going to get two, two, one because those are the number of ones in each row. In order to do a column-wise uh, summation, we just switch this to the first axis reduce, which on a matrix is going to do a reduction on your columns. And if we do this, we should end up with one, one, three which is exactly what we want. And now we basically want to turn these two vectors, rank one arrays, into a matrix so that we can do A plus B minus, in parentheses, C plus D. So the way I think we want to do this is just by, and we'll do this sort of verbosely to begin with, and then we will obviously shorten this up afterwards. So we'll put some unnecessary parentheses here. And if we do an outer product summation, if I can type correctly here, we should get, I think, what we want. And yeah, 
This is what we want, basically. And in order to do C and D, all we need to do is negate, or not negate, uh, take the not. So turn all the ones into zeros and zeros into ones. And this will basically give us what we want. And I think, so if we take a look at what diff was, if we go back, copy and paste this, and just hit enter, and then we put this all in parentheses, and then just subtract that, boom. We, so this is how you solve it. So you might be thinking, wow, that is very di disgustingly verbose. Um, I mean, it's short compared to the Java, C++, and Python solutions, but there is a ton of redundancy in here that we can get rid of. So first things first is, if you've watched other of my videos, we have sort of, you know, two unary functions, AKA the reductions, and then an outer product, a binary function in the middle. So we can refactor this stuff by deleting grid from here and just having basically one grid. And now I'm missing uh, parentheses. So that's the same answer. And we can go do the same thing over here, except now we're gonna refactor out the not grid. And that should work. Uh, that did not work because we still have a not hanging in here. This will work. All right, so now it's a little bit shorter, but we still have so much repeated code here. We basically got identical code. The only thing that's different here is the not. And so because this is common, we basically can use a combination of the phi combinator, aka a fork, and the psi combinator, aka over in APL, to do the following. So we want a minus after applying this on each side, and then we still want the minus there, and then we want identity. So basically what this will do is it'll create two different grids, one that's the uh, not, I keep saying negated, but I mean not, so the complement, and then this is the, just the identity function. Then it'll, after that sort of quote unquote pre-processing, it'll pass it to this twice, uh, each, each argument, and then the results of those will be subtracted from each other. And if we do this, we should get the correct answer. So solution, actually let's do this by typing backwards, is the following. And we can get rid of the first parentheses. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Clearly, I should have upgraded to ride 4.4 because the uh, syntax highlighting on the side combinator is failing here. But just magnificent. Is this impenetrable to read? Not in my, in my opinion, no. For most people, yes. But just fantastic. All right, let's hop over to BQN, do the equivalent very quickly. Probably not going to have time for Jay because I'm already at probably plus 10 minutes in this video. Over to BQM. All right, here we are in BQM pad, fire website. Shout out to the developers. Uh, I believe Andre Pop. Could be wrong about that, but link in the description. If you want to try out BQN online, it is awesome. All right, so let's start out with the column wise reductions, which we are going to use insert, which is what they call their axis, first axis reduce. And so we, we're good to go there. We're gonna do this one a little bit more concisely. So now we want to sort of concatenate um, with the row wise reductions, which we need to uh, do by applying uh, rank one. So now we've got our sort of row wise reductions, two, two, one, and our column wise, one, one, three, and so we just replace this catenate with a addition, and that's actually not what we want to do. We want to do an addition outer product, which is going to be this little table. Technically, they're, they call their outer product um, table, which is this guy right here. So this is the equivalent of what we had in APL, and so now we want to, once again, turn this into a fork, a phi combinator by putting the complement on one side and then the identity on another side and then we just want to throw in a psi combinator with a minus boom we're done look at that look at that folks god damn i shouldn't swear sorry apologize to the children out there but 
it's just so beautiful. And I mentioned that there are more combinators in BQN than there are in APL. So when you have a phi combinator, aka unary function, binary function, unary function, and one of those unary functions is the identity function that actually corresponds either to the S combinator or the sigma combinator. So if we delete this and instead put the S combinator, which is this guy, boom, we get the same answer. So same number of characters, but technically the S combinator is a more specialized combinator than the phi combinator. So I prefer that here. So we're making use still of a phi combinator in in here, and we're making use of the psi combinator here, the S combinator here, and all of the beautiful reductions, functions. It's just amazing. All right, we're wrapping up the video there. J Solution, I'll link in the show notes if people wanna go check that out. BQN, APL, awesome. Why write 30 lines of code in Java or C++ when you can write these mind-blowingly beautiful combinator array language solutions? Have a great day, folks.